really interested to see how it goes. So we'll dive in to actually game two. Uh, we're going to yes. be looking. We're going to be picking up this one at game two. Game one was won by Matthew. Yeah, and so Matthew, as he said, he was going to be on the play. Um, he had advantage game one, and he took that win. So now we're going to see here game two, see if Zan can um, um, pull this one out. It's going to be a really interesting matchup here between these two players. Obviously, they've been playing well all day. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what they have. Yeah, uh, Matthew, um, this is like a bit of a younger guy as well. So it's really impressive to see that, uh, you know, got the, the the stamina and the and the patience to stick it out and and, and play uh, to the best of his ability. We see a fantastic opening from Zan here, exactly what Steel Song wants to be doing. Cinderella on turn one. Uh, and yeah. You even saw Matthew's face there. Wasn't able to hide <laughs> the irritation <laughs> of the, uh, the ideal uh, opener there from his opponent. That poker face, yep. Uh, so Zan mentioned in his interview that we're, you know, both sides want to see that passive lore gain, the flutes and the queen's castle. So uh, we do see a flute, in fact, in Zan's hand there, along with a couple songs. Uh, we see a Rafiki come down from Matthew. So again, great opening for Matthew there. Going to be able to answer uh, a lot of threats that Zan wants to put down early. Uh, Pinocchio uh, especially will help Matthew here to be able to uh, allow Rafiki to pick what he wants to uh, to do. Uh, we Absolutely. don't see a song sung on turn two, so we're not quite coming screaming out the gate from Zan, but I, uh, you know, that the, the Cinderella will get traded with the Rafiki, uh, will get taken out by the Rafiki if uh, he does so, so. Sure. And I, yeah, I don't know if he wants to do that quite yet. And we see a Pinocchio, though, helping him to take out that Cinderella with Rafiki. As, uh, so both at the moment, both <laughs> players had the exact, not only the perfect <laughs> start for their decks, uh, the ones that they both said that they wanted to have <laughs> as well. So uh, just, I mean, if you ever needed more proof that these guys knew what they were doing, uh, go back and watch those interviews. And they basically described this game <laughs> down yes, to a T so far. to a T, so, yes. Yeah, they know exactly what they're doing. Yeah, these these players are they know what they're doing and they know what their opponent is doing. You know, as we've talked about, you know, being able to anticipate the next next move that your opponent is making is key to be uh, to do well at this high level of the tournament. Absolutely, yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't see the um, uh, the storm rage on there that Cinderella would have liked to have sung to deal with the Rafiki. So uh, Zan on the slight back foot here, uh, but even still, both sort of having a pretty decent start at the game. Yeah, and I'm sure Zan is not happy to see that snake bounce that Pinocchio because uh, we know it's going to come down again. And uh, we're passing now. That Pinocchio has really been uh, such an MVP for ever, every player that we've seen playing Amethyst. Uh, yep. Really, really such a great card. Absolutely. There we see a, a small Robin Hood going there, there, so we can shift the large Robin Hood, and the uh, large Robin Hood sings the whole new world. So uh, exactly what you want to be doing on... Um, on uh, Steel Song here, especially when your hand is already quite low, managed to get a lot of uh, cards out of that hand early on and drawing a whole new seven. And Matthew getting rid of five there, I think, including a ghost. Uh, so yeah, great play from Zan there. Exactly what he wants to be doing. And just the uh, the law starts triggering up there from the sleepy through. I believe they're both on one there. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Yeah, seeing that goat go into the discard is too bad. Of course, I'm sure he's running four of them. So hopefully we'll see some more goats later. But it, you never know. I mean, there's 60 cards in that deck, and even though you have maxed out at the four copies that you can have, it doesn't guarantee that you'll see it in the game. So hopefully we do see some more goats come. We see a, a six-drop Yzma there going into the ink coil. Not something you often see in uh, Ruby Amethyst. She is another lady on chairs. Ladies uh, on chairs. In the six-drop <laughs> alongside Tremaine and Medusa. Uh, very often used as a top deck to the uh, Amethyst Emerald deck, honestly. Uh, I don't see it too often in Ruby, but it's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting tech piece here. Yeah, so Matthew has two Yzmas in his deck, just one Lady Tremaine, and he's running three Meta Medusa. So he has uh, a few of all, all the ladies in chairs yeah, are represented do, uh, here. <laughs> and they all do the same thing in just a different way, really. They all uh, remove something from your opponent's board. Uh, Yzma, you're allowed to choose what is removed. You can use you can remove one of your own characters, in fact. Uh, but whoever owns yes. that character, the, uh, they get to draw two uh, the Tremaine uh, is, uh, is a, a, a the opponent chooses a character to banish, and then uh, Medusa uh, banishes any character that costs three or less. Yes, and we do see another goat there, so that's great. Or, three strength or less, excuse me. Uh, yeah, goat coming out, just sort of staying there on the board, keeping up the uh, the law race with the flute there. Yeah, and then he challenged into Robin Hood, which I think was real smart. We don't want that Robin Hood to stick around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just one of those cards that the more it stays alive, the uh, the, the more it's going to uh, be gaining uh, 
gaining tempo. So yeah, definitely worth throwing a few things into that to get rid of it while you can. Ah, and there's our spectacular singer, of course, Ariel, our, our poster child for this deck. And uh, such a beautiful card, too. I love <laughs> Ariel's my favorite <laughs> Disney <laughs> character, so I always love to see her come out. <laughs> she grabs an along came Zeus, uh, which is going to be able to uh, get rid of a, a threat later on. I'm not sure you want to use it against the goat. Uh, we are going to probably see a Benja get inked here. Matthew, if he's playing any items, maybe playing one or two uh, sorcerer's uh, spell books uh, for, the, uh, for the mirror, but usually uh, it's a pretty safe uh, ink there, a Benja against yeah. the Amethyst. Yeah he's, sneak him down. yeah, he's not running any sorcerer's spell book. I know that's a, a card that you'll often see in a Ruby Amethyst, but not always, or sometimes maybe just one or two copies. Um, and Matthew does not have any here. So I think inking that Benja was definitely smart. Yeah, we see a rabbit there just to help refuel the hand. Both players full hands off the uh, off the back of that whole new world there, being uh, giving themselves lots of options uh, to build this board out. Matthew here is going to want to start to uh, develop the board a little bit. Uh, Zan's not giving him stuff to to swing into with Fox. Uh, I think really his line here is probably castle um, uh, as quick as he can because that is something that he's going to struggle to uh, to deal with without the uh, Alan Kane Zeus, although he does know he has at least one of those in hand. Yeah, he does have a whole new world, though, here. Do you think that he's looking at playing that here? You know, he has the Spectacular Singer out, so he certainly could. He can sing it. I think if he if he did, he wants to really sort of empty the hand first. Instead, we see uh, Goat take the uh, Alan Kane Zeus. Um, I think probably going to sort of develop the board a little bit with another flute, yep, ah, and, yep. uh, and maybe get next turn uh, another body or two on the board uh, with a view to, to sing it next turn, perhaps. Yeah, which is good news really for Matt because he does have that Queen's Castle in hand, so he's going to hopefully be able to play that next turn. Yeah, now he knows that uh, that Zeus is out of the way. Uh, it's a little bit more of a straighter play to get the, uh, the Queen's Castle down, I think. Yes, yeah, I didn't see. Did Zan have any uh, other long came Zeus that he discarded with the last whole new world? Uh, I think that's really. the first one we've seen. I think that is, yeah. So there is a few more in the deck, running a play set of it. Just a great removal in steel. Hits characters oh, yes. and locations, deals five for four. Uh, it is uninkable, but it is singable. So a lot of stuff in the deck can sing it. All of your five drop singers that are singing Grab Your Sword and Whole New World anyway, uh, more than happy to sing that. Um, yes quieter i guess because it's one less thing i don't know <laughs> i'm not sure what the uh what i'm not sure the what right the theming term. is on that yes <laughs> and it's actually just a great song from the movie hercules of course <laughs> the muses sing it and it's oh. a fantastic song <laughs> absolutely uh matthew here inking a mini surfer yeah just double checking as uh, i'm there probably just double checking which one it is you do see play of the one three mini as mm. well so worth yeah. knowing which one's gone there and then uh, a medusa there taking out um the aerial again just sort of slowing down those uh those five drop songs and um yeah because at the moment they would have to be hard cast yeah which in the steel song it you really don't want to have to spend your ink to cast those songs so that you can keep playing your characters out on the board <laughs> and of course he has another aerial to bring down yeah absolutely um and he, another along came zeus and finds it again that's great <laughs> Um, I think law totals are a little off here. They're going to get updated now. If you bear with us one second. Thank you. There we go. Uh, player two, uh, Zan at six, uh, Matthew at three. You know, I was going to say, if he plays along came Zeus again, I'll, I'll sing the line from the song, but now I know he has it in hand, so. <laughs> <laughs> no one will commit just yet, eh? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Smee quest in there, taking a damage, but yeah, Zan just kind of uh, really putting the pressure on in the law game here. Uh, those flutes absolutely put him work in. Uh, yeah. Smee going to two damage, but most likely will get another turn out. Uh, Matthew having to play two cards here for something like a fox to come in. I think he's probably instead just going to leave that and uh, know that next turn. Uh, without a Rapunzel, it most likely gets finished off. But I think that is the slight worry here uh, with Amber is that a Rapunzel will heal that Smee back up. So maybe there is something to be said about, uh, about trying to take it out here, uh, but it would require fox and uh, a bounce target for the fox, I think. Yeah, you can see Matthew's face. He's really thinking about what he wants to do here. You know, not having any bodies on the board, he 
Couldn't bring out a fox unless you play something else first. Yeah, we see a Pascal. Oh, Pascal. And Pascal is bumping and the fox. fox. And the fox goes into oh the queen, actually. So trying to shut down the uh the, the, the singers fox. as best as can. And oh wow, look at that. Double fox you play. Know, double fox. Uh pretty amazing there. So we get one of them taking out the queen, the second one bouncing that first one back, who survives this queen uh challenge, uh taking out the SME. Awesome play from Matthew there. Absolutely exactly what he needed to do. That was fantastic. And then, of course, because he bounced that first fox back, he still has another one in his hand. And so yep. Zan knows that fox is waiting. Yeah, and there you go. A really great line getting rid of the Smee there because that Rapunzel would have healed it up, uh, would have drawn yep. two cards. Instead, he's just going to play it to empty his hand ready for the second whole new world of the game. Yes. A whole new world. There, I'll sing that one. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, so this... Yeah, flutes just every turn being able to trickle up that lower total to every turn uh, when Matthew's struggling to keep stuff on the board is uh, is going to be a big problem for him. I, I, I feel like Zan's probably uh, going to take this at game two and we will end up going to a game three. But like I said before, there is no time limit here. It's absolutely worth yeah. playing to your heads because you, you never quite know what line you're going to be able to see. Yeah, Zan really is running away already at 13. And oh, interesting. He's going to damage his own character with Let the Storm Rage on to uh, draw another card. I wonder if he has another Rapunzel waiting in the wings as well to heal her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting line. Again, uh, you know, he's he's going to require two cards here to deal with the aerial. Uh, the Rapunzel, even with damage on her there ready, is pretty safe. So, yeah, beautiful uh, play there. Just uh, one thing really sort of... Uh, puts players on another level is when they're happy damaging their own stuff just to get that value. Just what they yes. what they rate card draw at is uh, is really interesting to see. And again, yeah, especially with the possibility of another Rapunzel coming down and just helping to continue fueling that hand. Um, yeah, I think I think this one's probably in the bag for Zan, but I I, I do appreciate Matthew playing uh, playing it out because you're just never quite sure what you're going to see. You you never know. Uh, and with Ruby Amethyst, he does have uh, seven ink. So if he had to be prepared, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he would have played it already if he had drawn it. But mm -hmm. yeah, you're getting a bit of value out of the be prepared. Obviously, the flutes are still sticking around, though. Yeah. Um, Zan has a full hand of cards, a good number of ink to be able to rebuild the board after it. Um, yes, it's going to be doing some work here, but uh, not quite as much as you want. Maui is going to be able to take out Singer. We don't mind that. Don't mind that at all, but I, I don't know if that was enough. Uh, no, I, I mean, I don't know what is at this point, yeah. honestly, but you know, yeah. playing playing to the best of his ability, playing with what he's got, it's all you can really ask. Uh, at this point in the competition, uh, like I said, it really is just worth playing it out. And there yep. is the Rapunzel There's to the heal Rapunzel. up again. A little bit of a, yep. a no, acknowledging nod from Matthew there. Um, just sort of, you know, the little things like that are really nice to see when two players come together like this. They can just acknowledge that the other player knows exactly what they're doing and, and they're really having to play to the uh, to the top of their abilities here. Absolutely. I'm sure all these players here in the top eight, top four, are just have so much respect for each other. They're all such skilled players. They have built some incredible decks and they're all playing so well. I, uh, I believe actually Matthew and uh, Zan know each other as well, and they're and they're oh, local. Nice. They're local to the area, I believe. So. Oh, that's fantastic! I'm sure they've probably gone through this game a lot uh, beforehand. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there we go. And we're singing a song. We well, just playing play the song, but it does get the two law off the flute. Yes. Flutes don't mind if they're sung or not. Uh, they just want to see the uh, the song get played. Uh, we can come, uh, we can something there for another one drop queen. Haven't seen the uh, the shift queen here, but uh, the yeah. the threat of it has been enough for Matthew to deal with that small queen before. So it, yes. uh, it may well happen again. Uh, but now we have a seventeen. We have four, five on the board. Uh, flutes are going to get you two of that, even with a song. I'm pretty sure Matthew needs to go to game three here, and that's exactly what he does. Yeah, uh, that was very well played by both players. Matthew just didn't have the right answers to aim and how it plays out. Uh, so uh, decks have been uh, altered there. We need to get a shuffle from both of them. And then we'll be able to start. Yeah, so uh, just a reminder then, because people are, people may be watching thinking, hold on a minute, that was only game one. Uh, no, we did actually uh, skip game one in an attempt to kind of uh, bring the stream a little bit up to speed for you folks. Uh, Matthew took game one. That was game two there that we saw Zan uh, win. And so now we are going into the final game of the best of three format. Um, we move to best of three when we get to the... Um, 
the, uh, the the single elimination cut of the second day because there has to be a clear winner. We need to know who's moving on. Uh, it moves away from uh, match uh, game wins being the focus of day one to accrue points into full match wins uh, for the single elimination of day two. Uh, we see a chain of box followers coming down here for Matthew. Yes, and, and Matthew during game one was on the play and Zan was on the play in game two. And so Matthew is back doing that first turn again and we'll see how much that comes into How much do you think with these decks in particular? Because I think for some decks, you really going first is a, a huge advantage. Yeah, I think I think it is. And I think for both of these decks, it is, honestly. Uh, the, mm. the, 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 the board tempo of Ruby Amethyst really wants to come down early and put some threats down. Uh, but then also Zan just wanting to get that first whole new world sang as quick yes. as possible. So yeah, the the... Uh, there's always going to be a slight advantage to going first, as there is in any two-player uh, game. Uh, like I said before, you know, ask any white white piece players in chess; uh, they'll tell you that there's a, <laughs> there's a first turn advantage. So uh, it's a tale as old as time, but it is a relatively yes. prevalent in some of the decks more than others. Uh, I think decks that ramp a little bit into the late game can do a little better recovering from a turn two play. But here, yeah, you really want to be coming out the gate singing. Uh, so we see a mini mouse here. Uh, we saw those inked quite a bit in the last game, but now they're going yes. to come down and start threatening some early law lead. So we do finally see a singer. I think he just drew that Cinderella, but he didn't have any other singers in his hand until just now. Uh, and we also don't see that whole new world. So yeah, I'm it's, sure it's, he's... Yeah. Slow start for Zan here, unfortunately. We yeah. don't see a whole new world. I, we do see the shift uh, queen which yep. I, I feel like is a pretty uh, pretty strong play here, even though... Oh, no, we're going to ink oh, it. Wow, okay. I uh, say so even though there's nothing to exert here, I still don't mind uh, seeing that come down. Perhaps instead we see a flute. Yeah. And, and there then, is uh, and the singer Cinderella. coming out. So is that next turn then, the songs are going to be online. Uh, Smee can start questing here. Uh, not sure what Matthew's checking on the Cinderella, but yeah, we're up to a couple of law now with the Smee. Yes. And that Smee does take that damage since there are no captains out. And uh, Rapunzel can come out as early as turn four, correct? That's right, yeah. So so Smee's uh, just a really great quester on his own right. If you do have a captain out, he doesn't take that damage at the end of the turn if he's exerted. But um, but yeah, even, even with that happening, most likely you're getting sort of four, uh, or even if uh, with a perfect run, six uh, ink out of uh, six lore out of him, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, here in an Amber Steel build, that Rapunzel can come down yeah. um, and yeah. take... Uh, it's coming down on turn four, she's only taking one damage from him because the damage does apply at the end of the turn. Um, so there is something to be said about maybe holding Rapunzel back for a turn if you feel like the Smee is going to survive, so you can draw two off that healing instead. Uh, but yeah, you know, sometimes just a, the decent body of Rapunzel coming down who does quest for two in her own right and keeping that Smee alive for a turn, uh, maybe that's enough. Yeah. So we see a second Minnie Mouse here come down and those Minis, they quest for two and I think that is really great for Matthew. He wasn't able to get on much lore in the last game and so I, I'm sure that he wants to get on the board here and stay ahead of Zan as much as possible. Absolutely making the most of the turn one advantage here and putting those Minis down and just becoming the aggressor, just really putting the pressure on with the uh, with the questing uh, and, and making Zan. I'm not too sure really, you know, options wise I don't think there's any evasive uh, play in Zan's deck, so he's going to be looking for uh, targeted removal for those minis. Uh, we do see a Rapunzel getting inked mm, there. Inked. And then two uh, may well put down the... Oh, there we go. Now we ah, see the, now we see the queen. shift queen. Uh, now, any other time would be a really great quester uh, to give something a big enough challenge and get a free trade with the mini there. But like I say, mini is evasive. So uh, they're not going to be able to do that. Instead, he uses the shift ability uh, to be able to sing a whole new world. Uh, they're ditching a uh, grab your sword and Matthew losing a couple of rabbits by the looks of things. So, uh, yeah. so should so giving Matthew cards, but shutting down um, some more board presence with those. It'd be interested to see what Matthew's able to do with a whole fresh hand here. Yeah, it really is. Like you said, it's a that kind of, a little bit of a double edged sword because it does give your player, your opponent, a whole new hand, a whole new world, a, a whole new, new hand. hand. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And he gets to see that hand. In fact, he just played Bare Necessities, one of my favorite songs. And he can discard any non-character card, and he chooses the Queen's Castle. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Matthew's a little sad to see that go. But yeah. the Bare Necessities can get rid of items, locations, songs. And yeah, that Queen's Castle... 
it was the only target for him, but it's definitely you know a good target because it is going yeah. to be something that he struggles to deal with a little bit um, with uh, with this with with steel uh, amber steel. Other than the uh, the the uh, and then along came Zeus. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff in Steel Amethyst, the stuff that's sticking to the board has got big, uh, you know, big bodies, but not great challenging necessarily. Their willpower is usually where the stats go. Um, so it can, sometimes can be difficult to deal with those. So, uh, yeah, yes. otherwise, uh, yeah, good play there. Matthew's uh, really having to think now because board parity is, is pretty much there now. He, he's, I don't think it's going to be enough just to be uh, keep questing. He's going to start to have to deal with some issues here. Luckily, Amethyst is very good at that. Uh, we can get rid of that queen while we can. We are having to sacrifice the snake into it, but I, I don't mind that at all. Uh, yeah. That queen sticking around and questing, not only questing for two, but making Zan's trades much, much fairer. Fixing the problem almost of Amber Steel's uh, smaller strength uh, uh, characters. Yes, yeah. We also um, uh, didn't say, but Strength of Raging Fire was played and took out one of Matthew's minis. So he had yes. two on the board and and one of those went. So yeah, he's got that turn of box followers and he's trading it into to me. So really trying to take care of this board. And, and does so. Absolutely does <laughs> yes, so. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the Maui there finishing off Cinderella and still being able to quest uh, with two there. Yeah, really great turn from Matthew, actually. That that if we look back at this game afterwards, that may well have been the turn that uh, that swung it. That was a that was a really great use of his resources there. Uh, just on five ink was able to do that. Pretty good. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and on Ruby Amethyst, I know we've talked about this before, but you don't really need a lot of ink to do a lot. Um, you know. No, I mean you're very often sort of trying to get up to seven just so that yep. be prepared. The big, you know, the big red button is online. Um, but yeah, <laughs> often a lot of the stuff you want to do because of the uh, because of the bounce uh, package of uh, of Madam Mim, you're very often able to run at a slightly lower ink uh, ink count. Uh, you know, very often your early plays of Chernobog's followers, Pascal's, Rafiki's, if they're not able to do what they want to do, uh, very often they're great bounce targets for the fox, and then they become your ink moving into the mid game. So wow. uh, you know, it's almost card draw we got a double mini surfer coming down yes, here yes. uh triplets so here six, wow six <laughs> talk about steel songs uh, we've got the 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 three the trio of uh uh, over here could sing a lovely song i'm sure the minis are going to be exerted for six ink next turn that's uh, kind of huge we have a robin hood comes down wants to challenge can't Big hit can. any of them <laughs> yeah like you said steel really doesn't have in this steel song deck there's no evasive characters we're holy yeah, we again the world. last one the last one gave him those minis so it'd be really yep. interesting to see what the next one gets but at this point <laughs> zan is just going to be looking for answers needs to find those uh along came zeus i do see one in his hand but that's only getting rid of a third of the problem right now yep i think he has a strength of a raging fire there too okay uh, we'll keep ticking up the, the law with flute, but uh, instantly that one law gain off the flute uh, pales in comparison to the uh, to those minis. Oh, those minis. There. Yeah, triple mini is, is really kind of the same. Matthew's got to be super happy about that. Love to see it. Yeah, I mean, she's small, but she's mighty. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just that evasive, you know, it's just one of those things that sometimes decks just don't have an answer. Um, so, yeah, we've got a couple of Robin Hoods there. Uh, you know, his body's on the board, so maybe try and keep up the pace with the law gaining. But um, yeah, at this point, three minis being able to ready there is yeah. kind of huge. We can see a big quest here, I think. Um, you know, we may just see uh, Matthew extend the board a little bit. We see a Medusa getting rid of the Robin Hood. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely wow. huge. What a swing. That's uh, yeah, six evasive, six evasive <laughs> law, and Zan left with uh, one ones across the board. Uh, absolutely huge. Does not look good for Zan at this point. No, that Medusa really, really was wonderful to take out that Robin Hood and to be able to quest here for six. He's up to 13. So right now, it's unless Zan has uh, some answers, which yep, he does so. take care of one of those minis, uh, then... Yeah, we're looking at a couple turns away from a win here for Matt. Yeah, so that's exactly what he needed the Zeus uh, to get rid of one of them, but needs to find the others, really, to, to get rid of the rest of them. They're just going to keep questing. Um, There's at the moment. that 
does strength find their strength fire. there with the three characters mm. out. And that was probably the reason for putting the Robins last out, last turn, uh, just getting them down, knowing that he was going to need that strength to be bigger. Strength there, dealing damage equal to the number of characters you have on the board. Uh, so that mm. was uh, those Robins coming down there. Didn't feel like much of the time, but really it was just sort of future-proofing so that that strength was going to be online the next turn. Yeah, that, and again, that's just evidence of these players thinking ahead, knowing he wants to take out one of those evasives with that song and that he needs the characters on the board and able to do it. Absolutely. Um, at this point, I think Matthew just kind of needs to quest... Uh, I thought the I thought the uh, <laughs> footage had froze for a second. Both of the players went incredibly still. Uh, yes, yes, they're, yes. They're, still, <laughs> they're just, just thinking. Thugging. I think they're it's just, still Zan's turn right now. There and we go. They're, they're just, just yeah. Just taking a look at these cards again. Just trying to find some yeah. outs. Um, you know, I think Matthew's just getting a, a good idea of what's going on in the game. Just probably seeing how many of those uh, steel removal spells have gone because at this point, um, yeah. what he's maybe thinking is, do I try and pick that mini back up with a fox or something, keep her safe, or am I safe? Am I am I happy just leaving her out there and keeping the pressure on? Yeah. And, and as we've already mentioned, at this point in the tournament, these matches are untimed. And mm -hmm. so the players are really taking their time here to think through every move, uh, every possible line of play. Love that the, lady Tremaine coming Tremaine, down. Tremaine, yeah. I mean, Dan's just able to choose uh, one of his uh, one of his one drops to uh, to banish here. Uh, probably just looking to see how many of the shift targets have gone, but really at this point, that's an extra bonus. The the uh, the train's just coming down as a two law quester here at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yep. She she quests for two, which is great at this point in the game. He's up to sixteen now, and so he has enough on the board to take it next turn. Absolutely. And there's two readied characters and an evasive character still on the board there. So Zan's going to have to pull out some uh, a, a lot of steel removal here. I I I'll never say never, but I'd, I'd be very surprised if he finds an answer to this board state. Yeah, he's he's thinking hard here. I'm not sure what he has in his hand, but I, what what answers could there be here? Um, I mean, a grab your sword is going to get rid of uh, Cusco. Just the Cusco, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, mm. Yeah, the uh, the one drops, you know, shifting the one drops and then singing a bigger song with them may get rid of one thing, but he's really going to have to um, really just have every line here. I I I. I yeah, I, I I can't I can't quite do the math on what he could have, but I don't feel like there's enough here. We're hard casting a uh, let the storm rage on to put two onto the mini to draw a card. Maybe again, maybe just looking for that grab your sword, mm. thinking it'll take out the mini, and there's uh, game. And that was it. Yeah, yeah. game. That was amazing. Oh, fantastic 